the aim of this session is just for me to sort of share some of the stuff that I do around builds and some of the things that um, I look to see when I'm doing reviews um, in terms of testing, what types of builds, how you kick them off and stuff like that. A lot of the content really around and the questions we get about how do we check if builds work, how do we ensure that our staging builds and therefore our RC builds stay um, tested and up to date and all of that, it all revolves around this, the, the Jenkins pipeline system. So, um, which is, seems to be reasonably busy at the moment. So yeah, so there's a few different things. I'll just give you a little brief bit about what you can see on here. Um, so I'm logged in. So that's a reasonably key thing to do. If you don't log in, you can read everything, but you can't kick off any tests. So you won't have any play buttons or anything like that. And um, one thing that can be useful depending on how it's been set up is looking into the tabs at the top. There's some split tabs. So you can see the API mediation builds. You can see just CLI builds of which there's quite a lot of um, on the CLI tab, documentation builds, um, your main so we um, install packaging and test the main repos that pull everything together, that build. So yeah, that's quite useful if you, go, if you land on all and go, well, I don't know what I'm seeing. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, so that, that can be helpful um, or you just scroll down and, and, and find what you find. Um, the other thing you'll notice is we've got a few different types of icons here. We've got some which have got ticks and um, some failures. Uh, there's some folders, so folders like the archived builds. So these are builds that um, for either archived GitHub repos or things that haven't been run for a year or something like that in a folder. Or the rest of them is all of these pipelines. So these are linked to a Git um, repo basically, and that's where you'll find most of the um, most of the repos we have are using uh, Jenkins pipelines and are, are driven from a Jenkins file that's in the GitHub repo. Um, but yeah, I'll point out some of the kind of key bits to do. This is going to be mostly focused on the, um, the well, solely focused on the server component. But yeah, the main things we're looking at is the component type of builds. So that's things like we, the different components we've got. It's obviously the API um, mediation layer. We've got the Explorer APIs. So that's data sets and jobs. And the Explorer UIs, obviously there's um, uh, Zlux uh, jobs and um, pipelines as well. And then the thing, one of the key things is the things that pull them all together so that's Zoe install packaging and Zoe install test, which runs the tests of the whole system. So that's a very kind of high level overview. What I thought I would do is talk you through the sort of end to end process of what I would do and what I'd expect to see if I um, was making a change just so people can see that. So. Um, Unfortunately, it does take quite a long time to run your way through the whole pipeline. Um, a couple of hours probably um, from first change to all of the tests running. So I'm not going to show you live because that would be quite dull. So I've done some stuff this morning and I'm going to um, show you what I did um, and followed through. So I'm going to start with a change on the um, MVS Explorer UI. Um, component. So I just, yeah, I picked this because I had a change that need making on the Explorer components. So I thought I might as well use it as an example. So this one here, this is, uh, I did, hopefully everyone knows how to use uh, uh, GitHub. So I pulled the staging, latest staging branch. Um, I made a change, pushed a new branch, users slash Stephen H slash add validate scripts, and then made a pull request from it. So if you just look into it, um, there's there's a bug in the Explorer components where it, their validate scripts are not being included in the build. So I wanted to uh, make sure that that was fixed so we would um, run validates properly. So a very simple one line change, but it could be anything. Um, yeah, could make whatever you want. So I've got to this point where 
I've made my um, pull request now. So made the update in there. So um, I can do testing when it was a branch. I think I ran the tests, in fact, when uh, I just had a single branch. So my branch is called yeah, users slash Stephen H slash, I think it was called val add validate script or something like that. So let's jump into Jenkins and see how that shows up. So MBS. So, right, you can see in here, this was my branch build, which uh, automatically kicked off. So user Stephen H add validate script. So that was green. So looking good. Um, so then I've got my PR. I think this one was, yep, 117. So 117 the component builds ran here. So um, this component build, so the five Explorer component jobs have the build process, the unit test, and the integration tests all integrated in a single component. I know some of the other um, components don't have those integration tests. And in fact, I think some of them aren't on the pipeline. They're just within done in-house, but hopefully you've at least got some build um, which you can, which, which runs, and uh, when you make a new branch or a new PR, you can get and see the result of. So this is sort of my first step if I'm making a component change: is oh, we green, not load code coverage, not got any failing tests, all of that good stuff. Then the next thing is so I've. This is where the process stops quite a lot of the time at the moment. People go, oh, brilliant, my component's all good, deliver it. And probably 95% of the time, or maybe even more than that, um, that's absolutely fine. But sometimes there are integration problems or um, the installation might be affected. Particularly this change I'm doing is around how things are packaged. So um, scripts that run as the part of the life cycle. So this is a change that really needs um, to be tested in through the whole end-to-end -end full integrated product before we can be reasonably happy that it's reliable. So that's the next step in the process here. So the important thing to note, we've got the artifactory symbol here. So this is gonna be really useful to us. If you go into the console log, then I believe you can see somewhere in it, it will link, sorry, my mouse got stuck on the other screen. Um, you can find artifactory locations in here, deploying the artifacts and all stuff like that. That's absolutely fine. What I prefer to do is just use this link on uh, the front page because it's quick. So if I go in and click on that, then I can see all of the artifacts that um, are built from this job, which in this case is just one. So, and I can get the repo path or the branch so that's the important thing here is this branch sort of artifactory branch name if you want if you want to call it so it's 1.1.1 which is a version and then dash pr117 um, here so that that's the thing to note we've got so now i'm going to jump into so we install packaging so let's go to the staging branch. Obviously, I don't do normal, my development work actually on GitHub, but I figured it would be easiest to show you on here. So GitHub has got, sorry, their zone install packaging branch has got this file here, manifest.json.template. This is a really important file. This is what controls what versions get pulled in to this build. So if we go and look at the staging build, this is set up for 1.11. I think uh, we're in the process, Jack's in the process of migrating it to 1.12. We've had some discussions about should we pump everything to 1.12 as soon as 1.11 is out. But let's, let's assume they're okay at the moment um, and everything's building to 1.11, which I think it still is. Um, so you'll see that all of our binary dependencies are all being pilled, pulled in from this tilde 1.11.0 staging for all of the Zlux because they are generally staying in line with the overall Zoe numbering. But if we look at the Explorer ones, they aren't. They've got independent and the same for the API ML. Um, so this syntax may be a little bit confusing. 
So unfortunately, yeah, Jack's still not online to give you the full lowdown, but my understanding of it is the tilde means get me approximately this version from this branch. So if we have the VRM, so version release modifier, it will say, get me the latest build, which is within this version and release. So the tilde will say, grab the latest from 1.0. So that might be 1.0.0, it might be 1.0.9, it might be 1.0.500 million thousand. But as long as it's on the staging build, it will pick that up from there. So uh, how that gets generated, um, we can see here inside the actual component staging build. If we go and look in Artifactory, the latest one we have is 1 .1 dot, uh, sorry, 1 1.0.1 dash staging. So the tilde 1.0.0 dash staging will pull this version on and it will pull the latest release. So that's what's in the normal staging uh, build. And we can probably go and have a look at that. Um, yeah, this might be a useful thing if you want to go and um, debug and go, well, what version is getting picked up? So if we go and grab a staging build, let's just pick the latest one. So there's a whole lot of stuff in console output. Um, one of the things which is quite, I find useful, there, there might be different ways, is to look in the blue ocean uh, sort of UI for it, because you can see the different pipeline steps. So I happen to know that build source will show you the specs from Artifactory that you get downloaded. So you can see the different sort of stages in here. So um, we can see download spec is just about to be catted out in Artifactory in here. So this is sort of going to be generated from that manifest template. Um, what, we, what we've got and um, we'll hopefully see, yeah, we've got that, that tilde has been expanded into libs, snapshot local, org, zoe, explorer-mbs, and then 1.0.x, sorry, dot star, dash staging, slash star. We will say sort it by created, get the latest, and only get one. So that's ultimately what that, if I have it up, this tilde 1.1, sorry, 1.0.0 dash staging, this will get converted to that, this pattern here. So that's that's what that means if you go into it and go, oh, this is, I'm worried about this, my components are 1.0.9 and this still says 1.0.0, so it will pull that in. However, if you had a version that was 1.1, was in the latest, that would not get pulled in. It will use the BR to get the 1. Dot. So you can see that's the um, spec. And if you want to look at more details, um, you can see what actually gets downloaded. So if we find Explorer MBS, it's this version. So exploded to 1.0.1 dash staging 44 this build here which oh, sorry i've got um the zoom ui in the way so i'll have to try and which you can see is the latest staging in here so that's pulled it in so that's that's an explanation of what it is by default um and what we expect to see in the manifest. However, that's pulling in the staging release. I didn't want to do that because I've made my own version. So my version isn't in the staging branch. I've got 1.0.1-PR117, so my PR number. So what I then did was obviously, again, pulled staging down um, uh, onto my local thing and pushed a new branch with my update. So if I just show you the differences here if I go and do a compare to staging. Cool. So instead, oh yeah, this one is the, the <laughs> problem I need to fix with the uh, SMP 
build. So um, we, we'll, we'll ignore that one for the moment. Um, but yeah, so what I've done in here is gone, go and grab, instead of getting the staging version, go and grab. So I, I made updates to all three explorers because um, the same change was needed on all of them. But go and grab this version. So my version is now tilde 1.1. Sorry, I keep on saying 1.1, 1.0.1-PR117. So that was basically this bit of the output. So just to recap, I made a PR. I went into Artifactory, a PR for my component, went into built it. It was successful, went into Artifactory, grabbed the new version branch that we were going to need, then made a Zoe install packaging branch, which had these versions in, updated them. So because I'm not actually proposing that this would get changed, I'm not gonna make a PR from this. I'm just gonna run this branch. So the way I do that is, let's just tidy up some of this stuff in here, is, I'll go into the Zoe install packaging. I can either see at the bottom or I can go to this Zoe tab and grab it. Then this it syncs to Jenkins. So this will go and list me all of the branches I've got. So you can see my branches here. So users slash Stephen H slash uh, Explorer validation, which um, if you didn't see was the name of the branch I created on GitHub with my update and then I've kicked off the build. So the, the, there's sort of uh, a few things to note here, the two different sort of build, build types we've got. So there is two types of integration, packaging, whatever you want to call this. So install packaging job build. There's the convenience and the SMP build. So it's important when you're doing development to at least know this and what we prefer is that both types are built and tested. Um, we, we've had some occasions where um, staging has been broken for quite a while because uh, something's gone in which is broken SMPE packaging, but um, it still works on the convenience. So if you just run create a PR, and it auto runs, then it will just run that convenience script. So, cause that's the default one. Um, Jack and I have talked about changing it. So SMP becomes the default. So hopefully that will go ahead going in future, but yeah, something to be, to be uh, aware of. So to switch between the two, you do the build with parameters. So if I do build with parameters, this is all of the defaults. This will produce the, um, convenience packs. And if I do build SMPE, then this will produce the SMPE artifacts. So I think if I remember correctly, the build five, if I go and look at the parameters here, build five was the standard convenience build and build six was built with build SMPE. So that means when we go and look at the artifactory output, we're going to see the different uh, numbers of artifacts. So let's go and look at the convenience one to start with. So if you're running a Zoe install packaging convenience build, you get a single artifact, which is a PAX file. So this is really useful um, if you want to grab and download and do manual testing or for testing the convenience script. Um, so this is, this is what I will use on our um, development systems. Uh, I don't have the permission to do SMP installs or anything like that, but I can install a convenience packs. So I can go in here, do my manual testing, whatever, and check that I'm happy with the result. But this is how you get it. And you can just download it by clicking here. If you run the SMP flavor, then we've got a bunch of different artifacts of coming out. So there's a few different things that are used in base F mids and readmes and, and logs and stuff like that. The main two when to worry about when you're testing. So if you just want to test integration are these bottom two. So this bottom one is the convenience pack. So exactly the same as the one that was in the single one that was in the convenience build. And then the Zoe dash SMPE dot zip. 
this is the um, zip that contains the SMP artifacts, so for including the PTF. So we want to test the PTF. So that's that's in there. So my situation I've got is that those I've got a Steve, green may build. I give a minor correction. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Honor. Um, so if you, the, the the PTF will not install on top of the pack, so you need the first one, the fmit, uh, that zip file or a pax file, and then uh, the PTF one in Zoe SMPE. Yes, yes, yes. For doing a manual and those stuff. are the two that you need. Yeah, yeah. So for for the uh, yeah, yeah, because you said you need test the, the pack. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, ju just pointing that out because if you want to try the SMPE, you're going to need that first one and not the last one. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So, but um, yeah. So, so yeah, the first one's got the FMID, but in our testing, we take the 1.9 FMID and we try and do the this staging or this latest PTF on top of that. So, yeah, thanks for um, the clarification there, Ono. That's important, just because, yeah, we don't. We, there is a way you can test the FMID, but we generally aren't encouraging people to run those tests just because that's not what we ship. That's not how we push Zoe out. So, right. Um, so I've got my two green builds here. So that's looking good again so far, but the convenience works and the SMP. Um, I should note the SMPE is a sort of a superset. So if you just have an SMPE, then that's fine. The convenience does run quite a lot quicker. It depends how Maris is doing, but it's somewhere between around 20-ish minutes normally to run. So I quite often run the convenience first, then I can pull it or start the next level of testing and then run the SMPE afterwards. So, uh, and to recap, to run the SMPE, you do run build with parameters and select build SMPE. So I've got my packages now. So now is time for the tests. This has changed in the last probably six weeks, something like that, um, how it's run. Um, Zoe install test used to be a separate re GitHub repo. Um, it's now merged into the Zoe install packaging repo and Jack's done a lot of fantastic work about um, migrating us to use an Ansible based system for the install and testing to make it a lot more flexible. But it means um, also it's really helpful because if I make a change that has the requirement for a packaging and a test update, then I can just sort of push them, they'll stay in sync and run them together. It also means there's a slight change in behavior of testing. Back previously, um, if we think back to sort of February time period, if, if I'd produced the Zoe install packaging um, job, which I'll go and open up. Yeah, excuse me, I'll run back to it. This was my thing. So if I went in here and I had this PAX file and I went, oh, I wanted to test this, and I could copy this string. And then I used to go into staging of Zoe install test because there wasn't a separate branch. We'd prefer people not to do that. The reason being that staging, if we can keep staging to test staging builds, as you can see, it's all done here because we've got um, an annotation of what it's doing. So you can see this is the P uh, PTF testing. This is convenience testing then it means these results are a bit cleaner, a bit less cluttered. Um, you can run these tests against any branch or any repository, but then it means if we start getting failing tests in um, that we might see false negatives and people reviewing might say staging's broken or even worse, we've had situations in the past where we, the staging build has been broken, but we've had the odd false positive in because people have run um, PR builds which have got fixes or have got a subset of the tests that run maybe and so they've shown up as green. So what we would ask is and recommend is that you find either if you're doing a pull request or you're doing a, um, a branch build, find the branch that you had and then run it under that. 
So we can see in here, um, I've, I've done that earlier. So I grabbed, so if we go back and look, um, this one you can see was uh, Explorer validation number five packs. And I kicked off the job to test that. This one you can see Explorer validation build five packs here. So um, the, there's sort of how you do that. So this might be where Jack can tell me what the, the good way to do it is. I'll, I'll show you an example. Um, of when I do it, how it can be a little bit complicated. So I'll try and find, I'll just resurrect some, someone's build that's never been tested. So if you say have a brand new PR, so this process um, I'm talking about, obviously if you've made a change to the component like I did and come through, then it will look, um, you'll be doing this process. Or if you've made a change directly to Zoe install packaging, um, particularly people involved in things like cupids um, were doing that, then obviously this is applicable as well. So I've got my um, build that I want to test. I need to run the tests. So the problem is that I want to run the um, build with parameters, but it doesn't show up. So I'll show you my dodgy hack way and then Jack can tell me if there's a better way. What I do is I just issue the build now. It will take a little bit of time but what it does the first time it does the build is it will go to Jenkins, sync with the repo, it will pull the Jenkins file down, work out what all of the parameters and options are. At this point, I can then do a build with parameters. So if I wait um, a little bit for this job to pick up and do the downloads, then, then we'll see uh, in, in a minute it will pop up um, with the uh, the view of the progress of the, the build job, and then I'll cancel it, but I'll be able to rebuild with um, parameters. So hopefully the build systems aren't too busy, so they're not. It's not going to have to wait. But. I need some lift music in now. Yeah, so it's wait. Yeah, this this might be a bad <laughs> bad example because it's waiting for an executor. Because I guess there's a bunch of stuff uh, running. Um, excuse me, at the moment. So yeah, th this is this is the awkward bit of the process. So, but what what you would see, <laughs> and hopefully Jack can tell us a better way of doing it, is once it started on the pipeline, I then will kill the job. But then next time, uh, then when this page refreshes, because it's loaded it, I'll have build with parameters. So you can see you'll have this build with parameters option. So you can see that's exactly what I did here. I kicked off with build now. After five seconds, it checked out the job. I killed it straight away. And then I got build with parameters. So I'll just pause to see if Jack can tell us a better way to do that without having to. Um, do that uh, rigmarole of building and then killing it. I uh, see, this Jack. So uh, I think there is no better way because the, the all the parameters defined in the Jenkins file. Yep. Uh, from Jenkins' point of view, it has to be connected to the GitHub to see what is the Jenkins file and what's inside. So I don't think there's a the better way for now. Okay, cool. Yeah. So okay. so good news and bad news. The good news is at least I've not been doing it wrong forever. The bad news is, yeah, it can be a little bit of a pain. And I guess that we've got, sorry, um, the the Zoom controls keep on popping up over the top of the screen, which blocks me. So I'm guessing, yeah, we've got a bunch, whole bunch of stuff going. So um, the slaves look a little bit busy at the moment, Jenkins slaves. But yeah, so I've, once I've kicked it off, it's done the checkout, then I can kill it. Then I've got build with parameters. So let's go back to where we were. So the build with parameters, I had this repo in here, which was my convenience one, if we remember. So I will go in, do a build with parameters, and there's a few options to select. So the first one is started by automation. Um, this just, if you don't do this, then um, early on in the build, you get prompt to say, 
abort build or continue. Whereas if you say started by automation, it will skip to that prompt for you. Um, so you don't have to monitor it. So that's useful. Then we want to say, this is the default pattern for Artifactory and for this job setup. It says, take the staging build and look for the, the Zoe pattern of this within it. So I've got an explicit one. So I don't want to get it from that build. I want to grab this one instead. So that says, go and grab me this explicit um, download pattern, and then it will go into our Artifactory and go, right, let's pick this one. I'm, this is a convenience build, so convenience build test scope is absolutely fine for me. I've not made any CLI changes, so I won't change those. If you want to change versions of Node and stuff, you can here. Um, you can do some options, but generally I just leave them as they are, and then I'd click build. So uh, I'm not going to do it because I did it um, earlier. So uh, this, this is the, the here's one I did earlier job. So you can see I ran convenience build. Um, against build number five, um, blank artifactory build here, and uh, we got all green here, so green te tests. So that's that's a good indication that convenience build is reasonable. And so now it's the SMP build. So if you want to build the SMP or the PTF tests uh, in particular, if I'll go and look at number six. So remember, number six was my SMP build. So if I go and look in Artifactory, I've got all these different artifacts. The one that contains the PTF is this one here. So, excuse me. So I'll grab that. So the Zoe SMP.zip. And so now I can go build parameters again, start by automation, but then I'm going to change the test scope. So um, as Anu mentioned earlier, we've got the F, FMID or the FMID one. Um, if you wanted on, on the SMP packaging, we do, do build the FMID each time, but that's not what we ship to customers. We, they will take the base FMID from 1.9 and we ship PTFs. So we will, we will test and the overnight tests is of the PTF build instead, because that's, we want to try and uh, replicate uh, what we're doing for um, customers in our testing. So we've got the PTF build. I will put out this, remember this SMPE, zoe-smpe.zip, which contains files including uh, the PTF, and it will run the SMPE variant of this build, which runs different um, Ansible scripts, which does the SMPE installs. So again, I would get rid of the uh, build pattern, uh, sorry, the build, which is um, staging by default because I've got an explicit pattern. So uh, again, I've done this earlier and SMP PTF and run here. So I've got a failure. Oops, sorry, if we go back to it. I, uh, I've got a failure on this build. So this can happen. This is a failure in the, uh, the editor app. So, um, it's obviously not related to my change, so probably is a benign failure as staging is all right, but um, it's still worth uh, investigating. So we'll go and look into the console output. There's a lot of stuff here, so um, I'll click full log and then wait a while for it to load. So this is the sort of thing we would, um, I would do every morning when I come in. I'll check Slack for the overnight results. So while that's loading, I'll bring that up now. So, sorry, it's on a different screen. So if you're not aware already, then in Zoe-build Slack channel and the OMP Slack, every night we will run um, the latest staging build and we will have it uh, as both the uh, convenience staging here and the SMPE PTF staging and then we'll report the results and the CLI build gets uh, run as well and we'll report the results so we'll be pleased to see that last night's it's all green so everything passed so and quite a few different nights are green if there's a failure then it will look like this so we'll get the sort of orangey yellow sort of custard or whatever color it's uh, streak 
strip it is and then we'll get a message to say warning smoke test failed on the SMP build or on this one it failed on both builds and there's a link uh, unfortunately we only keep a small number of these so I can't go and show you a live how I go and look at those um, but you can see I don't know if I've got a useful um, pit yeah in this one I've just seen that the the failures are in the MVS Explorer and that was just because it was there was an update to the component but not the uh, smoke test so Jordan went and fixed those but we might be able to find something else I think the one after was to do with the PTF bucket possibly um, oh no this was this was uh, one that Sean had a problem with that was actually a passing build which was PTF yeah this was PTF bucket so this is one where um, we'd done a release, but we hadn't had the new PTF numbers yet. So I went and looked through it and found that the install SMP sysmod test, well, that stage was failing and it was trying to apply these temp PTFs rather than the proper names. And that was just because the bucket was out of sync. But I don't know if we can find some other examples because sometimes I'll list jobs. Unfortunately, we don't have much history on the OMP, so I don't think we've got any interesting ones with job logs, but at least that's good because we've had green tests, so I can't go and use last night's as an example of live debugging. So I'll just show you what I do in here. So back in the day, um, I used to just search for failed. Um, <laughs> now we're on the Ansible build. That's going to hit a lot of, uh, lot of problems or I'd hit error, search for error, and that's going to, again, I've got 200. So one of the things that I do now is um, based on the Ansible playbook, the different plays, um, I will go and look at the results. So I search for play recap, and that will show me the results. So this is uh, SMP, sorry, the PTF test. So if we actually go and just, I'll explain the whole plays through. Um, the PTFs are, have got a few different um, plays that will go if I can find the right key so in here the first thing it does is install the 1.9 fmid then it will install the ptf um, then it will run the sanity tests and then based on the test outputs we'll get the job logs and I think yeah that's the only four plays we've got in this one so um, if we look search for play recap, then that shows us the sort of summary, the Ansible summary. So I find that useful for narrowing down where in this massive file um, we've got errors. So we can see the first play, which was the install FMID, was had no failures. It was all OKs. So we're good there. The next one, which was install the PTF again was zero failures so we're okay there and then the next one which is a smoke test we got a failure here so and because it's uh, in here we can see the summary so in the test editor it was the before hook um, failed and uh, and if we go back and look at the um, test that did it if I can find the editor test probably not that interesting if you've, if you've got better eyes than I we can find the editor test and um, I mean we've got the result in here but um, it's just that there was a um, issue on the app the login page for when the app uh, loaded correctly there was a connection refused on it so it might have just been a timing issue because uh, we managed to log in for all of the other tests. Um, but I can see uh, for the ones I updated, which was the um, Explorer UI tests, we've got passing tests here. They're all OK. The MVS, the um, USS and the JES Explorer, they're all good. So we're reasonably happy um, that that was okay but probably I would want to just run again to make sure that this was nothing to do with my um, test or download it manually and run manual testing to make sure it's okay so this is sort of my process 
that I'm going through to execute and then how would that look like in when we get to uh, a, P, a pull request for someone to look at so let's go and do an example here um, so I'll grab I know Joe merged a PR of mine earlier so this guy so what I'm looking for when I come to review something like this and the the sort of evidence of it passing for example so this is just to give you the context this is an update to our Zoe support script to make it uh, use the minus L login location so if you remember if you were on the previous system demo um, I talked about the ability to specify the log location so in here uh, I've created some acceptance criteria so I've got four different scenarios for my um, my support script in here whether different dash L's and what I should see so that's what this job is is just uh, allowing a new option to Zoe support so um, when I've come to make my PR and ask for it to rev be reviewed so one thing I've done is I've kicked off all of the convenience tests sorry the convenience tests and the SMP tests I don't know if these are still around no it looks like those those jobs have been cleaned up now it's been merged but I've linked them in um, from the reviewer so that they can see what's going on um, in this particular case Zoe support is not used by our automation so I also attached evidence of all of my manual tests so I took each of the four scenarios that were specified in my acceptance criteria and demoed those and on uh, my local development system and uploaded the, those logs just because I know it's not test not tested but still I've got these tests here to show I've not regressed behavior so then once I've got to that point then I'm pretty happy we can be ready for review and so then whoever picks it up can take a look at it so this is one of the areas we're trying to um, make sure uh, there's more education around um, lots of people have got review rights to Zoe install packaging I know in certain other repos there's a smaller list of people who can be reviewers we've tried to because it's quite key and you can drag stuff in from all different components we've tried to keep it open but we want to try and really encourage people to make sure we don't get the regressions um, and the staging build failure by doing these tests doing the sort of things I've shown you by testing the components individually and that they integrate okay so that's kind of what I look for and what I produce um, on a pull request and if I'm doing a review is some evidence we've got both of them uh, running obviously the um, the test status that you get for the PR will show that the it, packaging job itself has passed and and so yeah these ones are both uh, my link to my PR in the, uh, the the test jobs so yeah that's pretty much it um obviously the reminders the sort of key things are um how you kick off the tests for the um the sorry kick off the builds the build with parameters the smp flavor and the zoe install test again if we jump in here the different options in here you use and just the reminder about um, the manifest file and how it works so sorry I jumped to staging just um, it's slightly different in RC because um, we get explicit um, versions sometimes included there but the reminder to try and keep this up to date um, so if you switch if we up the version number of the Explorer by my change if I made it 1.1 then let's make sure this is kept up to date and that we're not pushing stuff into staging for components but not integrating it to the build until we come to RC and yeah because otherwise I might come to RC and go oh Jack sorry it's on that should be version 1.2 of the jobs explorer um, we need to do that and then obviously during the month leading up to that we've not been testing it in staging so we want to try and 
make sure that the nightly builds are a really good indicator of what's going to be in the RC, the same versions uh, as much as we can, and um, that we keep these up to date. So this manifest.json.template, uh, that's the key way of, it's kind of the glue that pulls everything together. And But obviously when we make an update to that, then uh, we want to make sure that we've, uh, we're running through the test cycle as well. So, um, hopefully that's given you an idea i've not really gone into the actual jobs that run and the ansible scripts that drive them right now i in terms of testing integration of components that's probably not needed as much but um yeah that's that might be useful for another session